guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're doing really well. So for today's video, I have one that was actually requested by some of you guys and it is my best and worst luxury designer purchases. So it's definitely a video that I have been planning on filming for a really long time, but I've just not got around to doing it. So I'm really excited to actually sit down and film it today. So let's get straight on to the video. I think I'm gonna do like one best, one worst, one best, one worst. In terms of my worst, designer purchases there weren't that many that i was like oh my god this is the worst purchase i ever made what a waste of money mostly like they're just there's a certain reason why maybe i don't get that much wear out of it but like i still really really like it let's talk about my best purchases first so this is the chanel classic flap in the caviar leather. I do have a whole video on my YouTube channel talking about this bag. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail other than to say I get so much wear out of this bag. I've had it for about three years, but it is a vintage bag, so it's quite old. I find it great for day to day. I find it great for evening wear. I wear it all through winter. I wear it all through summer. It's not like a seasonal bag. Honestly, like the cost per wear for this is just brilliant. I just wear it so, so much. It's really hard wearing and durable. So I'm not worried about bringing it places. I just honestly love it. And I think the fact that it's vintage as well makes me love it even more in a way. I don't know why that is, but I just really kind of like that about it. And yeah, I get so much wear out of it. I love the gold hardware because it always like matches my jewelry and stuff because I always wear gold. It's just a great purchase. I don't need to bang on about it too much because you probably will have seen my video all about it. But yeah, that is definitely probably number one in my best purchases. So let's go on to my worst purchase. So this was my only purchase out of my bags that I was like, I just don't get that much use out of and I probably wouldn't miss it if it left my collection. This is a Fendi bag. Can't actually remember the name of this, but the reason that I'm not mad on this bag is two reasons. Firstly, I hate the silver hardware here. I just feel like that could have been gold and it would look so, so nice with the brown and the black. And it obviously has the silver hardware here as well. That just always puts me off it. I always think it just makes it look a little bit cheap. So I often, when I use the bag, will use it that way, which is fine, like, and I can do that. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I just wish, wish that was gold. The other reason why I probably don't get that much wear out of it is because it is so heavily branded and like very sort of heavily monogrammed. And I know that is the like classic Fendi style, but I just don't find it sits in with my style that much. I think that is why I don't get as much use out of, out of it. I love the handles so, so much. They're like this gorgeous kind of rattan handle. But then in a way, I kind of think that because these are quite summery and then the bag itself is quite dark and like kind of wintery, I kind of find it difficult to wear because I feel like it is really a summer bag because of these handles, but then it's very dark. Do you know what I mean? I do still like the bag a lot and I don't think I'll sell it anytime soon because I do still like it, but it's definitely one that I just don't get much wear out of. So I don't know, let me know what you guys think. It's actually quite spacious, like it does fit quite a lot in there and it does have a long strap as well, which is quite nice. So maybe, maybe I'll like try and make a bit more of a conscious effort to use this bag a little bit more, but I just don't get that much wear out of it. And I do think it's like the heavy kind of branding on it. Next up in my best luxury purchases, this is actually probably a bag that you guys probably haven't really seen before because I don't really show it, you know, on Instagram or anything like that. And it is this. So it is a Longchamp travel bag. So, sorry, it's kind of hard to show you when there's nothing in it. But this is the bag here. It's like this beautiful tan brown leather. And I love this. This was actually a gift for my 21st birthday from my parents. And as I said, it's from Longchamp and it is just the best bag for weekends away, although we haven't been doing that very often, but when we do, um, weekends away and like little kind of overnight stays. It's really like slouchy, so it kind of molds to whatever you've got in it. So, you know, if you need to put it in like an overhead compartment in an airplane or whatever, it will go in there fine. It's really durable because it's like that grained leather and has the short strap here and it has the long strap as well so you can do both. I actually got this from Vista Village so it was actually really heavily discounted so I don't know if they do this exact same one anymore. I'll see what I can link down below but it's just a great travel bag. Even like a gym bag it's good for. I just love it. I get so much wear out of it and yeah even though it's not the most kind of Instagrammable pretty little bag it's just so practical and I just had to include it because 
I just get so much use out of it. Moving away from bags for now, I am going to come back to them. I also want to say, if there are things in this video that I haven't included, it's not because I don't love it, it's probably more because I'm thinking about the stuff that I get the most wear out of. For example, I really wanted to include my little white Bottega Mini Jody, but I've only had that around six months. I don't want to say it's my best purchase because I don't know in terms of the longevity of it, how much wear I'll get out of it. So yeah, anyway, onto shoes. Now, these are actually quite a recent purchase and these are the Chloe Betty Rain Boots, I believe. I bought these quite recently. You guys will know that from my Instagram. <laughs> And I'm really sad about it, but I just have not got the wear out of these that I thought I would. When I first saw them, I loved them. I thought they were so cool. And I just imagined myself wearing them with so many outfits. But then when it came to it, I just didn't get the wear out of them. But I don't know if it's because I bought these in, I think it was like November or October time. And obviously we've been in lockdowns and stuff. So if I was like going out a lot more in the winter, then maybe I would have got more wear out of them. It's difficult to tell, isn't it? But yeah, they're the Chloe Rain Boots. They've got the square toe, they've got the big kind of chunky heel and the kind of jagged sole detail. And I could just imagine them looking so, so cool with like dresses and jeans and everything like that. But yeah, like I said, I just have not got the wear out of them. The one thing I would say is they aren't the comfiest either because they're kind of that like rubber. They don't mold and stretch that much. Like they are comfy, but they're not like super, super, super comfy. Like I couldn't walk really far in these. I actually think I'm gonna sell these because I, always like to like make space in my wardrobe you know and if there are things that i'm not wearing then i often look to sell them so if i am selling them they will be on my shop ruby holly page on instagram i'll link it down below you guys know how obsessed i am with these and these are probably my number one best purchase i ever made i love them so so much they are my white gucci loafers as you can see they are well worn well loved uh, but i think i am going to get them resold but I'm obsessed with them. I love them so much, especially in the summer. I don't wear them that much in the winter because obviously they're not very warm, but in the summer, they just get worn to absolute death. They're so, so comfortable. You only have to go on my Instagram to see how much I wear these bad boys. Uh, I recommend them to everyone. I just, I really, really love them. So yeah, these are definitely very, very high up in my favorites. Another shoe purchase that was maybe not a great purchase for me are these. So these are the Balenciaga triple S's that everybody was obsessed with. And I bought into the trend. I feel like this is a running theme. Whenever I go for trends, I normally don't get that much wear out of it. And it's just difficult to know whether something's a trend or whether something's not until obviously the trends pass. I definitely am like much more considered with the things that I buy now. But yeah, I definitely just got excited about these and the thing is, is I actually love the look of them. I know a lot of people don't, but I actually love the look of the shoe. I think it's really cool. I love the real chunky vibe, but they're just so heavy. Honestly, like I couldn't even hold them up here for that long. They are so heavy. And then when I wear them, I just think like, it's like a leg workout. Like it's really a lot. And that just puts me off wearing them. And I just don't find them that comfortable because of the heaviness. So. I'd probably say these are one of my worst designer purchases. Just, they're just so heavy. The next one is one of my best purchases. Now, I haven't had this bag a super long time, I will admit. Well, I've had it a year, but obviously I got it at the end of last summer. Sorry, ignore Rafi. I got it at the end of last summer, so I didn't get a chance to wear it that much that summer. However, I love basket bags and I have worn basket bags for years and years and years. I take them on holiday with me all the time. I wear them in England loads. And I just had to include this bag because I think it's such a classic and I have worn it so much already and we aren't even in the proper height of summer. It's just such a good size. I love how sort of casual it makes an outfit. I love the texture in it. And I love that it's got branding on it, but it's not like really, really obvious and like plastered all over the bag. It's just kind of here. Um, I don't think I said this is a Loewe basket bag, but yeah, I just had to include it. I just love it <laughs> so much. I get so much wear out of it. And it's just, I know it's gonna be one of those great bags for, you know, traveling, going on holiday. I can use it as hand luggage and then I can use it when we're there. Use it as a beach bag. Use it, you know, if I'm wandering around the town. But like I said, I have been using it loads in England as well. I love it, I had to include it because I know I haven't had it that long, but I just love it. Okay, so now going on to one of my worst purchases. This is the Gucci Double G felt that you guys remember everyone was obsessed with. I literally saved up all of my money to buy this belt. This was 
probably one of the first designer items that I bought. I just loved it at the time. I just loved all the outfits with it. I thought it looked so good. And to be fair, I wore it so, so much, but it's a bit like the Fendi bag. As I've got older, I have just preferred things that are a little bit more subtle. I just find this quite in your face and quite, it's very branded, as I've said. And this is like nothing against people that like these and wear these and still do. It's just my personal taste. And maybe if I'd gone for the smaller, Gucci logo, I would have maybe got more wear out of it. Don't get me wrong, like I'm not planning on selling it anytime soon because I do think these can look really, really good around dresses and stuff and I would still wear it, but I definitely don't get that much wear out of it anymore. It definitely got a lot of wear, you know, a good five, six years ago now, but I don't wear it that much anymore. It's difficult, isn't it? Because something can be a really, really good purchase, you know, at the time, but I suppose trends change, you change, what you wear changes, your body changes, everything like that. So you're obviously gonna go off things. But I suppose the great thing about designer things is often you can just resell them. So yeah, this would definitely probably be in there. Uh, not as one of my worst because I absolutely loved it at the time, but not right now my best, if that makes sense. But this next one is a little bit different and maybe not one you would have expected in this video, but I wanted to talk to you about swimwear specifically Hunza G swimwear. Now I don't know if you would consider this a designer item. I mean, it's hundred pound for a swimsuit. So I personally would say that's designer or luxury at least. They're pretty pricey for swimwear and definitely not something that I would ever think to spend a lot of money on. However, I was invited into a shop that stocks Hunza G to try out some of the new swimwear. And I've just tried on one of the Hunza G swimsuits. And honestly, I can't tell you, like I'm someone who, isn't very confident in swimwear. I have real like hang-ups about certain parts of my body, which we all obviously have. I'm very conscious of my stomach and I just don't feel that confident in swimwear. I would never feel confident enough to like post pictures or anything like that. Like it's just something that I, I just don't feel confident in basically. So anyway, then I tried these on and I don't know what it is about them. I don't know if it's like the stretchiness of them, the shape of them, but I felt so nice like i just felt like really really good in myself and i honestly think when you get that feeling you have to just buy it because <laughs> it's just so important to feel good in yourself anyway so i did buy the hansa g swimsuit and i wore it on holiday and i just felt good like i felt like nice i, I was happy to have photos taken i've even posted a picture in them i'm just not as conscious in swimwear now like around other people because these just look like good on me i think personally so yeah they have a square neck and then they've got a low back and um, they're one size but they're super stretchy like i have had friends who have been like eight months pregnant and worn them so they're really really stretchy i honestly just feel so good in them so they're definitely up there with one of my best designer purchases and i will purchase many more i'm sure because i want to get new colors and stuff like that i love them i know they're expensive for swimwear but for me having that feeling of confidence in them is just so so worth it okay so next up i have these babies and these are actually still in the box these are one of my worst purchases let me just get them out and show you these are a vista village special and if you don't know what vista village is by the way it is an outlet shopping center in the uk which I love Vista Village so much, <laughs> but sometimes I do feel like with outlet shops, you can get a little bit sucked in. Like you can see a price and see that it's really heavily discounted and therefore convince yourself that you need it when you don't. I bought these about four or five years ago and I definitely have like learned a lot more about shopping sensibly now. And I've learned that, you know, just because something's discounted doesn't mean you should buy it. It doesn't mean you want it. You have to want it in the first place. And then if it's discounted, like it's that bonus, you know what I mean? And I think with outlet centers, you can sometimes get into that like very excited, like, you know, you never get this discount off these trainers and all of that sort of thing. And I think, yeah, you can be kind of lured into making a purchase that you probably wouldn't have made if it was full price that's what i always now try and think when i go to like outlet shops or whatever or even if there's like discounts on for black friday and stuff i'm always like would i buy this full price if the answer is no then don't buy it <laughs> if it is yes then great um so yeah that's definitely just something i kind of learn about shopping but yeah they are the saint laurent white trainers uh they have the start detail here i actually again really like these as a shoe like i like the look of them and i think they're really cool and they're different and they're quite classic in a way just like the shape 
but they're not very comfortable to be honest i think maybe if i wore them in a little bit but the tongue is quite stiff uh so that makes it not overly comfortable and they're also a little bit big for me as well so that makes it also not that comfortable so these are one of my least worn ones i mean you can tell I haven't worn them really. They look grubby because that's like the style of the shoe, which I know some people are gonna hate as well. But yeah, I've barely worn them. Like they've still got the tissue paper in them. Uh, I think I've worn them like once or twice. That is just a lesson learned for me not to make purchases when things are discounted because you probably don't want them. <laughs> I will probably sell these. Part of me is like if I actually wore these and like broke them in and stuff, maybe I would sort of get more wear out of them. But I also probably don't think so. So yeah, that wasn't a great purchase on my behalf. I feel a little bit silly doing this video because I'm like, you know, it's, it's like not nice to look at things you've bought and be like, oh, I really regret that. But I suppose it's just like realistic. And sometimes we do make mistakes when we shop. And I think the important thing is just learning from the mistakes that you've made. Like for example, I've now learned not to get excited over discounts and not to like, you know, buy things that I don't necessarily need or want because of a discount. So yeah, it's just a learning curve, isn't it? Like as you grow up and stuff. Like I said, I bought these like a quite long time ago. So next up, let's move on to some clothes. So I don't really buy that many designer clothes. Uh, I'm much more kind of into shoes and bags. However, I did invest in some of the daily sleeper dresses. Probably last year I bought this or maybe the year before. No, I think it was last year. So these are around the 200 pound mark per dress. And I wanted to talk about this because this is one of my best purchases. I love it so, so much. And I really can't see me going off this anytime soon. It's just such a lovely classic style dress. I find it really flattering. It's got the shearing detail here and then these beautiful sleeves. I really like it. I find it really, really flattering and really comfy. And it's a great one to chuck in your bag for a holiday or something like that. And yeah, I'm just really, really glad I got it. I also have this in another color and I love it. I think when you you know love something so much that you feel the need to buy it in another color that just shows what a good purchase it was so yeah i wear this all the time i really really like it it's great for the uk but also great for holidays as well and it's definitely one of those pieces in the summer when i don't know what to wear that i'll kind of just chuck this on so yeah i wanted to mention that moving on to one of my not so good purchases in terms of clothing this burberry trench i love this trench and I really don't want to put it in my worst category at all because I wear it a lot. I really, really like it. But the reason I'm putting it in my maybe not my best decision category is because this is a men's trench and I bought it in a secondhand like vintage shop for really, really cheap. It was like 65, 70 pounds and these retail for like, they can go up to a thousand. So I was absolutely buzzing about this and Again, it kind of goes on to that discount thing, but this is just a little bit too big for me to be honest. And in the shop, I was like, no, I'll make it work. It looks fine kind of thing. And I do make it work, like I layer it up, but I always wonder if maybe I should have waited and tried to find another one that was my size, but it's really hard to find one for a good price. So I do still absolutely love it so, so much, but it is pretty big for me. So that sometimes puts me off wearing it a little bit. I'll see if I can get the size, although their sizing is so weird. I don't know if it's even gonna say the size on here. No, it doesn't. All I know is it's men's and it is very, very big. Like it would definitely like fit Sam. Um, but I still love it and I do still wear it, but I did want to include it because that was definitely just sort of a time that I got the sizing a little bit off there. I do still love it though. I have one more best and one more worst purchase to go. So next up, I want to talk about my Chanel backpack. So this is definitely up there with my best purchases. I bought this on eBay about three years ago now, I think. And I absolutely love it. I've been looking at these for ages and I kept either missing out on them or they were just too expensive and I didn't want to spend that much on it. And then I came across the perfect one on eBay that really, you know, didn't have that much wear to it and was at a good price. I obviously did loads of research about obviously the authenticity of it and everything like that. So I was really confident that when I, when I bought it, it was real. And I just love it. I just, I get a lot of use out of it because of the size. So it's a really, really good size. You can fit loads in it. And I also just love the way it looks. It's kind of casual, but you can also dress it up. I love how it's got the big kind of chunky gold chains. Again, it's a vintage one and I love 
the like vintage look of it it is like a soft leather so i am a little bit cautious of it but i think because it is vintage and it's already a little bit worn it kind of adds to it a little bit so i'm not overly precious on this bag and do you know what i also love about it is that i never see anybody else with this bag i always think like oh ref you just knocked the tripod i always think it's quite different i never really see anyone else with it and i like that about it i just feel like it's quite a unique one this one definitely had to go up there in my best category very lastly another one in my worst category now i think you guys are going to be a little bit shocked by this and again i don't want to put them in the worst category because i do like them <laughs> but it's these so these are Gucci loafers, but they have a back to them. So whereas the other ones I showed you are like the mule style, these have a back. Now, I actually got these as a present from Sam when I got my first job out of uni and it was so, so lovely. And that is one reason why I will never get rid of them because they just have really nice memories associated with them. And as you can see, I have worn them loads. However, I suppose this just goes along with the whole like your life changing and everything like that. When I first came out of uni and got my job, I worked in an office and these were perfect because they're so, so comfortable. And I was walking around a lot because I was in London and I was commuting and everything like that. So they're so comfy. I used to wear them all the time with like smart trousers. I used to wear them with like skirts and tights and stuff like that. And they were just my absolute perfect go-to shoe. However, I don't work in an office anymore. I work from home now and I just don't get as much wear out of them because I don't go to as many kind of smart occasions or you know like businessy things where i would need to wear like a really smart kind of shoe like this that is why now i would put them in my least worn purchases maybe that's what this video should be called instead of like best and worst probably like most and least worn purchases i don't know because i really don't want to put these in my worst at all um i know i'm saying purchases and these are a gift but you know what i mean i personally prefer the mule style rather than the like actual loafer style so that is why these are in my least worn so guys that is the end of this video i really hope you enjoyed it it was actually quite a hard video for me to film because there wasn't loads of stuff that instantly popped to my mind of things that i regretted buying which i suppose is good but as i said a lot of it you know wasn't because i don't like the item it's just like my lifestyle changed or sizing was different or something like that but it definitely does show that i have learned a lot as a consumer and as a shopper kind of mistakes that i've made in the past for example as i spoke about the discount thing the branding thing and obviously like as you mature your style is going to mature so i'm not going to beat myself up for sort of spending money on things that i don't necessarily use as much anymore because at the time they definitely brought me a lot of joy and i can sell things or i can pass them down to future children or whatever it is so yeah anyway i hope you enjoyed this video guys and i will link everything that i can down below in the description box and i will see you guys in my next video bye